Hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'm celebrating 550 subscribers. Thanks so much for your continued support. Now regular subscribers know I always do a bit of a silly video whenever I reach a landmark subscription rate and today is very silly. I'm going to celebrate my favourite bad actors. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those actors who are really annoying and spoil something when you go to the theatre or the cinema. But those bad actors who we kind of really like and we take to our hearts and in a way love as much as those great stars of stage and screen. In Britain, the king of bad actors who is entirely lovable is, of course, Robson Green. Ah, oh, yes, dear old Robson Green. Do you remember him? Robson Green came to fame, really, in Britain in the 1990s in a show called Soldier, Soldier, about the everyday lives of serving soldiers in the British Army. He wasn't actually one of the main characters, really, but for some reason, him and this other guy, Jerome Flynn, they became really famous. They did a song, they sang Unchained Melody. I think it was in the show, and then it got into the charts, and they became this kind of singing duo, Robson and Jerome. They were incredibly awful. Uh, but... Robson Green almost overnight became a, a really beloved actor. And then he was cast wonderfully in this programme that I used to have to subtitle as part of my work. It was called Wire in the Blood. And it was a serious crime drama where Robson was given this incredible role. And the role he had to play was this really intelligent and dark police detective who could get into the minds of serial killers, you know, and psychos. Now, bless him, I'm not sure that Robson was really up to this role, but manfully he went for it. And he did that thing that a lot of bad actors do. He tried to sort of convey the idea of this eccentric genius through his line readings. So instead of saying, hello, I'm Robson Green, I'm an actor, he'd go, hello, I'm Robson Green, I'm an actor. You know, breaking it up. And, you know, so, saying it in a strange way. Except that Robson brilliantly got it wrong every single time. This, you know, he got it went to a, a, almost something beautiful. Because it was so wrong every time, it was actually kind of wonderful to watch. In each episode, he's partnered with his chief of police. In the first three series, it played by Hermione Norris. You remember her, she was from Cold Feet, really good actress. And in the later series, by Simone Labib who's a really good Scottish actress. And I love watching those two actresses struggle with Robson's eccentricities. You know, the camera keeps cutting back to them, watching him as he goes through the mindsets of these killers. And half of it is them playing the character, trying to understand what this complex psychiatrist is saying. But the other 50% is the actresses looking at Robson Green and sort of almost going to the audience like, what's he on about? It's fantastic. If you go back and watch those episodes, it's a masterclass. It's absolutely wonderful to watch. I enjoy it very, very much indeed. It gave me so much pleasure. Another programme that used to give me a lot of pleasure when I worked on it as a subtitler is an American show. You see, America have their equivalent of Robson Green. And he appeared in a series called Gossip Girl. XL, XL. Now, you might not have heard of Gossip Girl. What it is... It's like a soap opera, and it's about teenagers in upper-middle-class Manhattan. They're all sort of wealthy teenagers going to some smart school. And it's about their sort of relationships, and one of them apparently is sort of um, sending anonymous messages about the others, gossiping about them and telling them all their secrets, right? Now, one of the characters is played by Blake Lively. I don't know if you ever come across her. She's a young, blonde well, she was at the time, new actress. And Blake Lively's got this style of acting. She is a good actress, but she has this style of acting that you sometimes see in American teens. You know, this kind of, like she's drunk, like she's going, you know what, I, I don't know what you want from me. You know, it's kind of that kind of acting, you know. And then her boyfriend in the first few series is called Dan, right? And Dan, he lives in Brooklyn with his musician father because they're a bit... They're a bit boho. They're a bit cool. They're not like these, you know, scumbag posh guys from the upper middle class. And um, he's played by a guy called Penn Badgley. Penn Badgley is the US equivalent of Robson Green. He is fabulous. And the scenes when him and Blake Lively got together were just gorgeous. They were 
brilliant event TV. I used to look forward to it. I was working away doing the subtitles, and I used to look forward to those sequences. So you'd have Blake Lively going, you know what? I, I don't know what you expect. And then he, he, would, he would do his Robson Green acting. He would go, what? Um, I'm just here. You know, and it, it, the back and forth between them was a joy to behold. I wish I was a, better, a good enough editor to sort of drop scenes in. I'm going to learn that for those regular viewers. I will learn how to do that. But I wish you could see it. I, it actually, it really gave me a lift in my day-to-day -day job. I used to really enjoy it. So Penn Badgley, I understand he's won some awards. Incredible. He must have got better. He was pretty terrible in Gossip Girl, but wonderfully terrible. Now, those of you who like bad actors, you will, like me, be in the fan club of Tom Atkins. The great, the legend that is Tom Atkins, or as I know him, the Tom you know Tom Atkins, he was in John Carpenter's The Fog, his masterpiece, where after defeating some sailors who've risen up from the grave to enact a hundred-year-old revenge, <laughs> he watches as the fog drifts away, and the first thing he does is just get his cigarettes out of his pocket and lights up. That's Tom. He's a great guy. If you want the best of Tom Atkins, you must watch Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which, as all horror fanatics like me know, is one of the secret great horror films. Um, watch Tom running through the hospital corridors in the first few scenes. It's real Lee Majors, you know, Six Million Dollar Man, you know, in slow motion stuff, with his man boobs going like that. Like that sort of stuff. Uh, there's also an, a wonderfully awkward scene where he, he, he pairs up with this young girl who's looking into these strange events in this, in this uh, sort of industry town. And they're in a motel room together and they sort of, you know, give each other the eye and end up in bed together, even though she's much younger than he is. Um, it's great fun. And Tom Atkins in that, Tom Atkins acting in that scene is, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Go and search it out. Now, if you come this far with me in the world of bad acting, we have to go back now into the strange world of British film and television in the 1970s. And we come across a guy called Prentice Hancock. Now take a long look at this photo on your screen now. That's the expression that Prentice Hancock had in every single TV show or film he ever appeared in. He was always cast, Prentice Hancock, as um, a difficult, slightly, you know, violent man. He was never happy. He was never comic. He was always a bit prickly and a bit difficult. And so he had this prickly, difficult expression on his face every single time. But the thing, the thing is, he was difficult and prickly as an actor. He was so wooden, his delivery was so, you know, basic, that actually it helped. So, like, for example, there's a Doctor Who story called Planet of Evil, where he's cast as the captain of a starship who's, who's too young and inexperienced to know what he's doing. And because Prentice Hancock's acting is so stilted, it actually adds to the impression of this captain who doesn't know what he's doing. So you kind of believe in him. That's what I mean about bad actors sometimes being good. If a more respectable, more talented actor played that part, it might not have come across so well. Also, another actor who used to appear regularly in British films and TV in the 70s, again, and appeared in Doctor Who, is an actor called Louis Fiander. I wonder if anyone else has come across this actor. Fiander appeared in an episode of Doctor Who called Nightmare of Eden, where he put on this ridiculous German accent with the Doctor, um, which got him a lot of criticism. But I mention Louis Fiander because I feel sorry for Louis Fiander. From reports, he was not a very popular actor amongst his fellows. And this reached a sort of climax when he was cast in a Spanish horror film in the 70s called Who Can Kill a Child? If you've not seen this, this is a cult horror movie you should seek out. It's about this English couple and they go to this island off the coast of Spain and all the adults have been killed and the children have gone mad and they're all, they're, you know, they're devil children. It's one of these kind of, you know, evil children films, which is great. And Louis Fiander is the husband. Now, I have never seen before in my life. I got the Blu-ray of this film out, I rented it out. And the director's commentary is with the director, obviously. And he said, Louis Fiander is a crap actor and he ruined my movie. I've never heard a director ever say that about one of their actors before. To say that they're bad. 
and that they ruined their film. Poor old Lewis. That's a bit much, isn't it? I mean, he's not that bad. I mean, okay, he's pretty bad. But he's not that bad. I've seen far worse, especially in horror films. Check it out. Poor old Lewis Friander. I feel a bit sorry for him. Now, we're going to finish this video by going way, way back in time to the cinema of the 1940s. And we're going to come across an incredibly, wonderfully named character. Skelton Nags. What a fantastic name that is. He was an actor in the 1940s. He's a real curio. Skelton Nags uh, was a very wooden actor. But he had a remarkable face. A really extraordinary, you know, very memorable face. A rather spooky face. A rather unsettling face. And he appears very often in spooky films. He's in a lot, for example, the Val Luton films. He's in The Ghost Ship. He's in Bedlam. Uh, he was in the Michael Powell film, The Spy in Black. He also turns up in Moonfleet. Um, and he's got an extraordinary presence on screen. Even though he's not a terribly good actor, and whenever he, he's required to read lines, he's very wooden. His face and his aura, there's something about him that comes out of him. You never forget him. He's one of the best bad actors in movies. If you've never seen him in a film, uh, it's well worth checking him out. Watch out for him in The Ghost Ship. I think that's his, his most effective performance, actually. Uh, Skelton Nags. Check him out. Are there any bad actors that you like, uh, that you have a fondness for, that you look out for? Those are six of my favourites, but I'd love to hear of your own. As always, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe.